Hello and welcome back and hope you have covered all the fundamentals uh, or the previous sessions what we have completed for AutoCAD. In the previous session of AutoCAD, we have completed drafting settings or you can say function keys. Now, those that particular session is particularly useful for creating or being more productive in AutoCAD. Okay, before that, we were covering the fundamentals of AutoCAD like how to create basic shapes. Now, from today onwards, we'll be focusing more towards the very advanced part of AutoCAD. Okay, so we cannot say it is like more of an advanced part, it is kind of a modification tools. So as of now, what we were covering was basically the drawing tools and from today we are going to cover modification tools. Okay, so now modification tools will help you to create your drawings in a much faster rate. Now for this, for today's video, we'll be covering five major modification tools. Okay, in this video. So those tools are move, copy. Rotate, Scale and Mirror. So these tools will help you to create a drawing in a much faster way. Okay. So move for move the command is M enter. For copy, okay, C enter will not be the command for copy because C is already for circle. So for copy the command is CO enter. For rotate the command is RO enter. For scale, the command is SC enter and for mirror, the command is MI enter. Okay, so these are the commands which we are going to learn today. We are going to start with move, then we are going to learn how to create copy, then we are going to learn how to rotate, then how to scale and then how to mirror. Okay, in a very basic way, in a proper way. Okay, now starting with the first command that is move. Now let's assume a situation where I have created a circle here. Okay, and I have created a line here. Now while creating a line, I'm activating ortho. Okay, so that my line is straight. Now what I want to do is, I want to keep this circle on top of this line. Okay, I want to keep my circle on the top of the line or I want to keep the line below the circle. Any which uh, condition like is necessary. Okay, so I want to create or I want to move my line to the circle or circle to the line. Whatever I want to do. So in those cases, I can start with move command that is M enter. Now, in any modification tools, the software will ask you to select the object to which this tool is going to be applied. So when you press M enter, it is the software is asking you to select an object. Okay, so here it is asking me to select an object. So I selected my circle okay, as an object, then I press enter. So if you want to select any more objects, you can do that. Okay, if you have completed a selection, you can press enter. Then it is asking you to specify the base point. So I'm specifying the base point exactly in the center of the circle. And now you can see my circle is moving. Okay, from that location. Now, here there is one small problem. My circle is only moving horizontally or vertically because ortho is on. So, if I deactivate ortho, my circle is free to move anywhere. And I can place my circle anywhere I want to. But as I told you, the condition was to placing the circle on top of this line. But the problem is this will be an approximate location or approximate position. This will not be the proper positioning of the circle. Why? Because I cannot actually click over here. Why? Because I want to keep the bottom of the circle on top of the line. So in that case, what I can do when I use move command, okay, M enter. When I select the object, that will be done in a very similar way. Enter. When I specify the base point, that time I can click on this point as my base point. So my mouse will be attached to that point and then I can keep my circle over the line very easily. And this will be the proper positioning. So this is how you can move the object. Okay. Now let's say I want to move my circle. 10 mm or 20 mm above the line. Okay, like I, I don't want to keep my circle here. I just move it, want to move it up by 10. So in that case, what I can do, I can go to move command M enter. I can select the object again. Okay, I select the object, press enter. Then I want to specify the base point. Now in this case, because I'm going to move the object with a distance of 10, it is not really necessary you specify the base point in the correct location. I can specify anywhere I want to base point. Okay, but I will start ortho and I want to move it up by 10. So whenever you are moving uh, with the distance, it is not necessary to specify the correct base point. But if you are moving from point to point, it is very important that you specify the correct base point. Now, let's say I want to create a copy of this line and I want to create a copy of this line over here. Or let's say a copy of both of, both of this object over here. In that case, I can go for copy. See you enter. Now copy is very similar to move. Okay, in move, what happens is like when I move, let's say for example, if I'm moving these two objects from this point to this point, 
you can see the original object is going away. So that is move. But in copy, what is going to happen? If I press copy, same thing, select the object, enter, then the base point. Then I can turn off ortho for freeform copy. And then I can place the copies wherever I want. So I can create the copy. How many number of copies I want, I can create that many number of copies. And it will be pretty simple for us to create a copy. Okay. Now let's say I want to create a copy in a particular distance. For example, from here at the distance of 100. So what I can do, I can activate ortho and I can type the value 100. So if I type 100, same like move, it is going to create a copy at 100. Similarly, if I type 200, a copy at 200. If I type 300, a copy at 300. Okay. So this is how you can create copies. Okay. I hope you got this point. So how to create move and copy is clear. Okay. So move is a very important tool and copy is again equally important tool. Both will help you to increase productivity in AutoCAD. So by knowing move or by knowing copy, you don't have to create your diagram in a correct location or correct position. You can create it somewhere else and then move it to that location. Okay. Now, next option what we're going to learn is called as rotate. Okay. In the assignment, when I'll be giving you, I'll be giving you some assignment for move, copy, rotate, scale and mirror. Now, in that assignment, I'll be again explaining you most of uh, all the five tools. Okay. So don't worry about it. As of now, we were just learning the how uh, learning the use case of the tool, like how to use the tool. We are not learning the application. Okay. As of now. So the next tool we are going to learn is called rotate. Okay. Now I'll give you one example for rotate. For example, I have created so many objects here. Okay. What I'll do, uh, I will create a plus sign. Okay. For creating a plus sign, I'll use line. Okay. And then I'll create a line of, let's say length 100. Then again, a length of 100. Then a length of 30, suppose. Then again, 100, again, 100, then again, 30, 100. So I'm just defining the values, 100, then 30, then 100, 100, and close. So let's say I created this plus sign. Okay, I'll create a copy of this plus sign. So you enter copy because we already know. I'll select the entire object. Now to select the entire object, you can click anywhere and then create a window like this and click. So you don't have to click and drag the mouse. If you click and drag, this is going to happen. So don't click and drag. Just click and click. Okay. Enter base point. And then I'm creating one, two, three, let's say total of four copies. Okay. I'll create one more copy. See you enter. I'll select all of these and create, define a base point here and create a copy somewhere over here. So I have like many plus signs over here. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to apply rotation to this plus sign. For example, I want to rotate this plus sign by 45 degrees. So I can go to rotate R O enter. Now here it will ask me to select the object. So I'll select this object enter. Now it is asking me for the base point. Now let's say I'll specify this bottom middle point as my base point and I'll deactivate ortho. So now you can see that plus is rotating. And if you notice the bottom middle point is a fixed point. So in this case, uh, the base point is generally a fixed point in move and copy. The base point is a moving point. And here in rotate and scale, the base point is going to be the fixed point. So let's say I want to rotate it by 45 degree. I'll specify 45 and press enter. So you don't have to do any calculations for doing this. So let's say I told you to create this kind of diagram. What you can do is you can create a straight version and then rotate it. Okay. That will be easier. So again, again, rotate this time. I want to rotate it from the center. So I'll select the object, enter base point. I'll give with the help of tracking lines exactly in the center. Okay. So this is the tracking lines. And if you're not getting tracking line, remember the short key is F11, right? Last time we have discussed in the previous lecture. Now here I want to rotate it by now it is rotating from the center. So now I want to rotate it again by 45. So now the rotation is done. Now after rotation, let's say I also want to keep the original one. Like I want to have this as well as the new one. I want to have both. Okay. So I'll go for rotate again. I select the entire thing. Enter. I'll give the base point here. And then rotate it. Now, while specifying the rotation angle, I also have an option of copy. So if I press copy, that is C for this example, then you can see the original is also remaining plus the new one is also coming. So I can now give the angle of 45. So now we have both the things, the original one as well as the new one. Okay. So this is how rotate command is going to function. Okay. Next command, what we are going to learn is called as scale. Now scaling is something very important and very easy to use command. Now, for example, here we have a length of 100 for almost all the object. 
okay how i'm defining the dimension we are going to understand after some time for now we are not focusing over how i'm getting this dimension but for now the main goal here is to understand what exactly the size of the object is now i want to make the object so small that the length of 100 should reduce to length of 50 means i want to technically make the object half of the original size so half means 1 by 2 or 0.5 so there is something called as scale factor which we need to calculate for scale command and which is a very simple calculation there is something called a scale factor which we need to calculate for scale command and scale factor is basically the new value the value we want divided by the current value okay divided by the current value okay the new value divided by the current value so now let's say i want the size of 50 so if i divide the new value with the current value that is 50 divided by 100 this uh, factor would be uh, 0.5 okay so scale sc enter selecting the entire object enter base point again i'll give it in the center because i want to keep the center fixed now you can see the object is either getting bigger or smaller so here in scale factor i'm defining 0.5 so now my object is exactly half okay so how to get the factor i hope it is clear let's say for example here i want to make the size 80 okay so uh, you can take a moment you can write in the comment section below what will be the scale factor if the size is 80 so the scale factor calculation is 80 divided by 100 basically the new size divided by the current size and the scale factor what i'm getting is 0.8 now because the value is 100 it is very simple to calculate the scale factor okay scale sc enter i'll select the entire object enter give the base point somewhere and then i'll give 0.8 so now the size should be 80 similarly if you want to make the size bigger for example in place of 100 i want to make it let's say 115 okay so again the formula will remain the same new size divided by original size so this time i'm getting 1.15 so again i'll go for scale selecting the object giving a base point and 1.15 so by doing that i'm getting the size of 115 okay scale factor will always change based on the current size of the object so it is very important to understand that okay again while scaling if you want to keep both of these like i want to keep the original one as well as the new one i can go to scale i can select this and then i can specify the base point somewhere over here and then i can also use copy option inside scale so if i say 0.5 so original one is also there plus a new one is also there where the sizes are set to half so this is known as scale okay now moving to the last command which we are learned for which we are going to learn for the day that is mirror and that is going to make your life a lot easier okay for example uh, you have just recently seen me like creating this plus sign what will happen if i know mirror and if i can use mirror to create the plus sign but before that let me explain you the mirror command so for example i have a rectangle here and i have a circle inside my rectangle now i hope you already aware about the rectangle and the circle command okay now mirror m i enter now it is asking me to select the object which i want to mirror i can select this circle in this case then press enter now it is asking me for the first point of the mirror line so i want to mirror it exactly on the other side so i can specify this point as the first point of my mirror line basically the midpoint of my rectangle so now you can see the mirror is happening now if my second point is here the mirror will be perfect okay so i'll specify the second point here and the mirror is perfect okay now sometime there can be a condition where you don't have a second point okay for example mirror i'll select this two circles then specify the base point here now in this case i don't really have the second point so what i can do i can press ortho or i can activate ortho for straight lines right so now you can see mirrors is also happening straight so either i can mirror here or here okay so i can click anywhere even here so do you want to erase the source object no okay i'm clicking on no so i don't want to erase my source object now if i click on yes let's say for example i want to mirror this entire thing on the right side like this if i click on yes the original option will be erased now let's apply this on this diagram 
So for example, I want to create few lines. Let's say a line of length 30 and the line of length 100. Again, a line of length 100 and a line of length 30. So I just created this part of the diagram. Now I selected mirror, M I enter. I selected this line and this line because I want to mirror these two lines along with this one, this three, enter. The first point will be here, midpoint. Second point will be horizontally like this. And I don't want to erase the source object, no. So my mirror is done. In the next scenario, I will select all of these. I will not select these two lines. Enter. The base point will be here. And then the second point will be here. And again, no. I know you can create this diagram with the help of line command, but by using or uh, knowing mirror, it becomes so easier. Okay. So this is how you can use mirror command if you want to. Okay. Now we are done with all five of the five of the basic modification tool. We are going to learn more in the next video and more different modification tool. But for now, I want to assign you with some practice diagram because I haven't done any practice diagram in the previous video. So in practice, you are going to create this two diagram. So you can take a screenshot. Okay, of this diagram, or you can look the dimensions here. Okay, I will just verbally say the dimension if you are not able to see it 24, 12, 16, 30, 18, 12, 8, 28, then 9, and 20. Okay, similarly over here, the other dimensions are quite readable or quite big. You can also create this one. Okay, so I'll just zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that you can see the dimensions more clearly. So in the bottom here, we have 36 and 52. Then we have 3, 12, 30, 73, 19, 40, 20, 38, 14, 7, 28 and 44. So you can use all the tools which you have learned so far. Now you can use mirror, you can use lines, relative polar input, whatever you want to use, you can use. The goal here is to achieve these two diagrams. Okay, so try to achieve these two diagrams as and when possible. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a great day ahead.